Hey, New Horizon, it's Pastor Mark down in the Alpha Room. Just found a quiet little place where I could have a chat with you. I want to talk about fasting. You know, it's not something we talk about very often. And here's why, because Jesus says when you fast, meaning he anticipates us to fast. When you fast, don't blow the trumpets. Don't sound the trumpets. Don't disfigure your face. Don't make it known to other people that you're fasting. It's just between you and your God. And so we don't talk about it very much for that reason. It's not a stipulation we're not forced to. Uh, God doesn't require it of us, but it's a really, really neat experience with God. And that's what I want to share with you. We're in the Lenten season. It's the 40 days leading up to Easter. And traditionally, it's been, I guess, commemorated by Christ followers in a, in a time of walking with Jesus to the cross and to consider what he's done for us and simply draw closer to our God. And that's what fasting does for us. It's a beautiful thing. We're going to do what we call John Wesley fasts, which is funny because it's not like he invented it. It's just something that he practiced. He would eat supper on one night and then not eat supper until the next night. And he would do that weekly, 24-hour fast, so to speak, called a John Wesley fast. We're going to do that on Mondays through March. So there are four Mondays leading up to Easter. And if you would like to give that a whirl, then I would invite you to do it. And I, and, and I would offer that because I enjoy fasting very, very much. It's been a, a huge part of my God walk for many, 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 many years. And so I'm a big advocate. As I say, we don't tout it, we don't talk about it because it's just between you and God and a very personal and very private thing. I, I like to, to say uh, we need to get the right the idea of fasting, that this is not a way that we're punishing ourselves for our sins or something. The cross fully cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We don't need to burden ourselves to somehow make us more worthy of God. That's not what's going on at all. Nor is fasting a way to get God's attention and to sort of force God's hand in some way, like I need something done, so I'm going to fast, and that will leverage God, and he'll surely do it for... That's not why we fast. That's not why we fast at all. Or maybe we're making a decision. There have been times I think, well, I've got this big decision to make. I'll, I'll fast, and I'll, I'll see what God's got to say. And, and if God's not speaking, fasting doesn't force him to speak, you know? It's simply this, I, I, this might sound weird, but it's kind of our love gift to God. And I think it has to do with our biology. I think of it this way. I love to kneel in prayer. Why? Well, my body is sort of submitting itself to God. And then my spirit uh, uh, gets fellowship with God in that way. Sometimes lying prostrate before God. There's something our body is doing that's humbling us before our God and we commune with God in our spirit in that way, lifting our hands in worship, another way of just our body subject to our spirit and offering ourselves to God. I think fasting is in those lines. There's something biological about it too. When we don't eat, our body is weakened, and it, as, as you well know, but it's more than just not eating. Again, we're not, we're not trying to abuse ourselves. We're, we're not trying to prove to God our love for him or anything like that. If you've had to scan, uh, I'm sorry, if you've had to fast or something because you've got a, a medical test or blood draw or, a, you know, God forbid, a colonoscopy or something, that's very different. You're just not eating. And those are kind of miserable because, you know, you know what's coming and, <laughs> and you just, you, you, you just skipping meals because you have to. This is a voluntary thing and you just choose to fast. God, I'm gonna forego my meals because I wanna be with you. It doesn't just give me more time to be with God. It's a different kind of being with God. So I have fasted, uh, John Wesley fasts. I do two or three of those a week and I enjoy that because it just keeps me in the flow of, of fasting. That's a pretty cool thing. I've done some prolonged fasting. Um, three days sometimes kind of gets me there. I'll go a week and I've done a number of two-week fasts and I, I really, really enjoy those times. Is it arduous? Well, certainly. I mean, it, it, it can be tough on you. You get hungry, that is for sure, but I have learned something interesting I share with people. I don't know that it's my hunger as much as it is my cravings and even my, uh, my addictions like caffeine, sugar, fat, carbohydrates you know I'll, I'll in a prolonged fast sometimes I'll have a dream of a big steaming plate of nachos or something you know because <laughs> your your body is craving those kinds of things I, I don't think it's as much hunger as it is those things and that's why these 
these uh, 24 hour fasts through the week, they, they just kind of keep me in that point. I'm, my body is not as dependent upon those things as they might be. When I enter a, a fast, again, it's a voluntary time, just a time to be with Jesus. And I find that as my body weakens, my spirit man, if you would, and my mind, my heart, they get the driver's seat. Typically, it's our bodies in the driver's seat. That's why when we walk past the refrigerator, you open it up and you got a you know, snack on a, on a cheese stick or whatever it is, can't walk by the candy bowl or an open bag of chips, you know, because your, your appetites, your cravings, your body is kind of in the driver's seat. And when we fast, we're telling our bodies, no, no, no. God's spirit in me, God's spirit strengthening my spirit. I'm going to walk in my spirit. And I, I really think this is key to our God walk, that our flesh does not get to rule the day. Instead, we're learning that by God's spirit, our spirit will rule the day and find in Christ and by his Holy Spirit victory over the stuff in our lives. So this is a little bit of exercise in that regard. When I do prolonged fasting, I, I get fatigued because my body doesn't have those things. And so naps, <laughs> naps are a part of a prolonged um, fasting experience for me. And, you know, I, I take naps and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I think it's neat too that when you're fasting, you get this kind of built-in alarm clock. Your, your stomach rumbles a little bit and you think about Jesus. Isn't that a cool thing? It draws us to his heart. And maybe rather than eating, that's a great time just to spend some time in prayer or in the word, just be with God. But I think all through the day when our appetite grumbles, it, it makes us realize that there's a God in heaven and we're, we're working to connect with him in this thing called fasting. Now, saints throughout history have fasted in many, many ways, and, and I do believe the biblical fast is what we call a water fast. You drink water, and your body has to have water, but it doesn't have to have food, at least not for many, many days, and we know that to be true. So keep yourself hydrated if you should choose to fast. Also, if you have a medical condition, you'll want to speak with your doctor about that and just clear that. I have a friend that had diabetes, and, and uh, he said, I don't know that I can fast. He went to his doctor, said, can I fast? He said, absolutely. Then you don't need your insulin because you're not, you know, you're not disturbing your, your chemistry and such. I don't know that much about it, so I would want you to talk to your doctor about it. But as you fast, friends, again, we're laying aside even the necessities of life and we're saying to Jesus, I really want to be with you. I just want to spend time with you. I want to commune with you. I want to draw closer to you. In fact, you're more meaningful to me than my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You're my sustenance. You're my God. And I give my body to you. And I think there certainly is a, a dying to ourself in fasting. And we die to ourselves that Christ might live in us. Again, this isn't somehow proving to God that you know we're worthy or that we're awesome or we're not we're not begging something of God. We're offering ourselves to God just as Jesus offered himself to us. And that brings us back to the Lenten season. And that's precisely what Jesus did. He laid down his life for us. And in fasting, I think we're saying the same in, 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 in a far, far smaller way and very more temporary way. But God, I offer myself to you, heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, intellect, emotion, psyche. Here I am. I'm yours, and I want to be with you. If you should choose to fast, I would, I would encourage you to be very humble about it. Nobody needs to know. Now, I know it can be a little bit weird if you've got family members and you have family meals together, and I think that's very important. Denise and I have supper together every day. It's just the way we operate. And to not have supper with Denise is weird. So oftentimes it's when she's away for a week seeing the kids or something, that's the time I use to fast and, and uh, those sorts of things. But I would like, uh, I'd like to encourage you to keep this very humble. It's between you and God. Don't sound the trumpets, as Jesus said. Don't disfigure your face. Don't tell people how hungry you are because you're fasting. And Jesus says, well, you've just, you've spoiled it. You've kind of lost your reward there, meaning you've, you've short-circuited the whole process. You go into your closet and you spend time with God. Now, a number of us have uh, lunch meetings and that kind of thing. I, I get that, that it's a little weird to go out to lunch with someone and say, well, I'm fasting today. But oftentimes what I've found is it's, it's, um, it's understood. And, and people say, well, I really respect that. Is it okay if I eat something? Yeah, well, absolutely. I want you to, I want you to eat. So as you do that, do remain humble. 
and look to Jesus. And I, and I pray that as, as you do this, if, if you have other questions, that you would simply contact me. You can email me and find, find me here and there that way. If you have experiences of fasting and you'd like to share those, Again, we don't announce those from the rooftop, but we do have conversation with one another as Christ followers, and I would welcome that kind of a conversation. If you have concerns about it, I, you know, we could certainly talk about those things too. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't claim to be an expert. I know people who fast uh, in in pretty severe ways. I've known several people who do forty week or forty uh, day fasts, and they do that regularly. And I have great respect for them. I've not done that perhaps sometime in my life. I would do that. I would like to have that experience with God. But uh, I'm certainly not an expert. But I offer you that because if you've not considered fasting, if that's not been a part of your spiritual disciplines, then this is a, a time for us to, to give that a whirl. Experiment with it a little bit. Go with that, God and, and, and learn about it. You know, Have your own experience of God, your own experience of fasting. Make it what you will. It's between you and God. He's not forcing your hand. He's not requiring this. This is simply a way for us to say, all right, God, here I am, and I want more of you. So I'll leave with you, you with that. And in fact, I want to close with a prayer here. Father, I do thank you for the gift of fasting. I thank you that you offer that to us. And I don't know what it is that happens biologically, uh, anatomically as we fast, but I know somehow my spirit rises up and I'm just more sensitive to the things of God, the people around me, the sunrise, the, the crickets, the birds. And I love that, God. I feel more alive sometimes simply because my interface with you in fasting. And so I would pray for anybody here who's considering it, that should they step into this, that they would meet you there, that you would meet them there, God. Please instruct us in the hows and whens and whys and whos and all that kind of stuff regarding fasting. But I simply speak your peace over us. I thank you that you don't force us, that you're not arm twisting us, that you're not, um, you're not badgering us, God, but you are inviting us. So thank you, God. And as perhaps we take you up on your invitation, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So blessings to you this Lenten season, this East, Easter season, friends, and may God be closer than ever. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.